I, I spoke to Rashad Bateman, um, who made that big catch that set the Ravens up uh, right on that red zone area. Uh, he felt like that that was a touchdown. Um, he said it's Chiefs kingdom. Welcome to the NFL on Fox podcast presented by Verizon, the NFL powered by Verizon 5G and me, your host, Dave Hellman, powered by the pure adrenaline of that finish in Kansas City. Welcome into the show, a special Thursday night football recap for a very special season opener. We thought it would be good. Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, AFC title game rematch. We thought it would be fun. I don't think anybody saw an instant classic. We've had good Thursday night football openers. Last year was a one-point game. A few years ago, Tom Brady against the Cowboys comes down to a walk-off field goal. But this, what an amazing opening night of football. The Kansas City Chiefs, if you haven't heard, hold off the Ravens 27-20. to It's decided in the red zone in the final seconds. Lamar Jackson finds Isaiah likely at the back of the end zone for the game-tying touchdown. John Harbaugh's going, two, two, we're going for two. They're going to go for the win on banner night in Arrowhead. If only. Isaiah Likely's toe just barely out of bounds, like Kevin Durant in the NBA playoffs a few years ago. If he wears like a half-size smaller shoe, we were talking about a completely different finish. The refs take another look at it. Likely is ruled out of bounds. The Chiefs escape 27-20. Like, it's not fair that they wind up winning this game by seven because it, it was decided by the slimmest of margins. So many moving parts here in this game. I think, you know, the the morning talk shows, a lot of people talking about this game at, at, at work on Friday, probably going to point out Lamar with a miscommunication with Zay Flowers on this same drive, had him wide open in the middle of the end zone, said later he was looking for Rashad Bateman, I believe, missed a wide open touchdown pass that could have tied this in slightly less dramatic fashion. Really, th- this is going to sound weird, But an out-of-sorts night, I thought, for Lamar Jackson. Averaged less than seven yards per attempt. The Kansas City pass rush worked this Baltimore offensive line over. He, He very rarely had time to throw. When he did have time to throw, it's because he was extending plays. Even the the out of bounds throw to likely came after he had to do, you know, twirls and and all sorts of evasive maneuvers in the pocket. It was that type of night. 26 of 41. Like I said, very rarely was able to target anybody downfield. The Ravens running game outside of Lamar, not really getting anything going other than the opening drive where Derrick Henry did score the first touchdown of the season. And yet, having said all of that, Lamar Jackson, 395 yards of offense and a touchdown to open up his first game after winning his second MVP. If that's an off night from Lamar, It's going to be a hell of a season in Baltimore. 16 carries for 122 yards, 273 passing yards. And I'll say it one more time. What I thought was a iffy night from the reigning MVP. If that's what you get on an iffy night, yikes. Let's see where the Ravens go from here. A lot to clean up, a lot of penalties, a lot of missed opportunities. Again, Lamar very rarely on the right page with his receivers. Offensive line going to be seeing Chris Jones in their nightmares for the next few days as they get ready for week two. Kansas City looked a lot like we expected them to and not not even an amazing night for them. The defense picked right back up where it left off up until that final drive, probably a little more dramatic than they would prefer, but the pass rush was there. Chris Jones looking like he didn't miss a beat maybe wants to get his conditioning a little more in order, had to come off the field a few times there in crunch time. But the defense holding the Ravens to 20 points, forcing a few key field goals, getting just enough at the end. And the offense, don't want to overreact to one week, but 
Kansas City offense looking like it's got the juice that it didn't have in previous editions. Xavier Worthy with a hell of an NFL debut. Three touches for 68 yards and two touchdowns. Opening touchdown of the season on an end around and then completely uncovered. But hey, when you've got that type of speed, you can make defenses pay. The Chiefs score 27 on a night where Patrick Mahomes didn't look quite as crisp, had a had a very uncharacteristic interception in the first half of this game. I'll say the same thing for them. If this is the Chiefs looking hit and miss, Travis Kelsey, a very forgettable night in his first game of the season. If this is hit or miss from the Chiefs, everybody else better look the hell out because Xavier Worthy looks like he's going to be dangerous. Rasheed Rice picking up exactly where he left off at the tail end of last season. And this is an offense that, Still doesn't have Hollywood Brown. Just a phenomenal game, and and not a clean game by either team. Ravens fans going to be feeling a little bit of heartbreak, if I had to guess, in the, for the next few days as they look forward to week two. But two teams that look every bit like playoff contenders, two quarterbacks still pulling off amazing feats on nights when they were not at their absolute best. Patrick Mahomes, maybe his best play of the night, is recovering a batted ball by Trenton Simpson to avoid an interception, literally catching his own pass. I think Patrick Mahomes, you can officially give him credit for mossing somebody to come down with that, let the Chiefs run off some time. Up and down nights by two of the best quarterbacks, maybe the two best quarterbacks in the NFL. If that's what you get from them when it's not all clicking, I'm so excited to see where both of these teams go from here What an amazing night to open the season. And we're not done because as promised before the game, we do have somebody live on the scene in Kansas City. Henry McKenna was at Arrowhead taking in the scenes. An unforgettable opener. Going to chat with him about what he saw at the buzzer there between the Chiefs and Ravens. All right, Henry, you're just getting back from post-game availability with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I have a feeling these guys are going to want to watch the film back another time because we're hearing from Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman that they think it was a touchdown. I hate to argue with with guys that play at such a high level, but fellas, I I don't think so. I think you're going to change your mind when you see a clearer replay. Yeah, Dave, they know ball, but um, also I and this guy don't lie, as most players would say. Uh, That was not a touchdown. Uh, tough, heartbreaking loss for the Ravens and for the, the final three passes to be incompletions, two of them being wide open opportunities for Lamar that he missed. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, coming out of the locker room, like you said, I, I spoke to Rashad Bateman, um, who made that big catch that set the Ravens up uh, right on that red zone area. Uh, he felt like that that was a touchdown. Um he said it's Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, maybe the implication being that you know there were uh, some zebras on the uh, the Chiefs side there, but uh, really I don't think that that was the case, as we said. And then I also spoke to a tackle Ronnie Stanley, who spoke pretty openly about how he felt like quote he, it was kind of making him crazy uh, and quote look, looking at the Chiefs tackles uh, versus him. And, you know, the tackles were flagged for Baltimore uh, multiple times for illegal formation. And he felt like that side by side um, was not really making sense where the Ravens were getting flagged for the illegal formation. But it looked almost exactly like what the Chiefs were doing and they were not getting flagged for illegal formation. So what uh, Stanley said was that he just hoped that if it was as egregious as he as it seemed to be, that, that they, the referees, would be held accountable for their errors. Uh, and we'll see kind of what the league office and the officials have to say about that in the coming days. I, I will give, I'll give Ronnie Stanley that credit. I mean, yeah, I think there's inconsistency there. I think a, as entertaining a game as this was, the refs were incredibly involved. We know the Chiefs are, are famous at this point for, for pre-snap penalties or sometimes lack thereof. Jawan Taylor at right tackle is a constant source of conversation. We'll say I'll, I'll give Ronnie Stanley that I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not buying this part about the touchdown at the end, but as, as long as we're talking about 
the Ravens offensive line, Henry. I mean, you had a bird's eye view of this game. And I talked about it before you hopped on. A very, a, a herky-jerky kind of night for Baltimore. You know, Lamar doesn't have a lot of time to throw. There were plenty of missed opportunities. But we talked about this in the preview. This is a team breaking in three new offensive linemen against a beast like Chris Jones, as you very uh, correctly described him before the game. As, as off-kilter as it looked at times, I'm not worried just yet. I think that this is a very classic case of a Ravens offensive line that I would guess is going to find its footing as the season goes. You're not always playing Chris Jones at Arrowhead Stadium to open the season. Yeah, I think there's two clear takeaways for the Ravens, which is one, they kept it within a touchdown and really like they were knocking on the door um, within inches of tying that game up. So that's the good. And like you said, the the offensive line has plenty to uh, figure out. I was talking to multiple offensive linemen um, after the game, trying to figure out maybe like what was going wrong and communication, operational. It was really top to bottom. Like they were trying to figure out uh, how they were going to do it together as a starting five and they weren't there yet. So big work in progress, honestly, with that offensive line. And so maybe there is some upside there. Maybe there is some figuring that, that, that will start to sort of like normalize um, what, what they were doing, but it started to feel like the Lamar Jackson show in the fourth quarter. And, and that was another thing that Rashad Bateman said after the game, like it can't be a one man team, right? Like we can't have um, Lamar having to do it all just to win the game. So I think that I expected, for example, Bateman to need to have a big game and Ultimately, he did make like that big catch, but was basically like not present prior. I think he must have finished with three catches and and the other two were not like significant plays in the grand scheme of the game. So uh, ultimately, it did kind of come down to a lot of the matchups that we highlighted yesterday, which was that these three new offensive linemen basically weren't ready for Chris Jones. I mean, look at just like we talked about the rookie right tackle, right? We sure did. And Rosengardner's first snap. He's matched up against Chris Jones, and it was just unfair. Chris Jones absolutely slammed past him, strip sack, turnover. uh, Chiefs get the ball, and then they they end up with three points on the drive. So, um, but okay, so here's the flip side, uh, which is that the Chiefs didn't really play very well. Like from an execution standpoint, I said the same thing. Stupid interception. There, yeah, there were some swing passes that the running backs kind of couldn't quite get, and it was. One of them was Isaiah Pacheco. He got zipped the ball from Mahomes. It wasn't like a super egregious drop. But then the Samaj P. Ryan play, you know, that that was a third down play that could have been a first down, could have extended the Chiefs drive, could have meant more points. So um, I'm not totally sure that the, the Chiefs will look at that film and feel super proud of what they did. That's kind of what troubles me is like Mahomes is kind of the king of doing just enough. And so like the Ravens were, were within a touchdown, but also – I don't know. I think that that the Chiefs probably could have done a lot better job closing out that game than they did. And it, and it didn't feel like Mahomes quite put it all out there. Certainly, it didn't look like Travis Kelsey put it all out there. He was doing some pretty good blocking. But from a passing standpoint, like I would almost blame him for the interception. I was watching him closely on that route. Um And he was like, he didn't even look up at Mahomes, who was just waiting on on Kelsey. And by the time Kelsey did look up, Mahomes had to look off, look middle. And in a rush, he couldn't see, um, I forget which linebacker it was. Was it Patrick Queen, who ultimately came up with the interception? Sorry, Roquan Smith. Patrick Queen is no longer there. Hey, it's week one. We're still getting adjusted. We'll, We'll see Patrick Queen going against these Ravens before too long I do I want to get you out of here on one more thing about the Chiefs and I do agree with you I mean this is this is a low baseline for the Chiefs in the grand scheme of things in my opinion but you were in the press box it sure seems like the speed of Xavier Worthy and later I do think Hollywood Brown will be part of this as well it looks like this offense is going to have juice that it just hasn't had and I think that matters on multiple levels. Like obviously worthy showed that he can make big plays, but I think teams are going to have to honor that speed. And that's why Rasheed rice was as wide open as he was and able to do all the work that he did seven catches for 103 yards. 
even on a night where they didn't look amazing, this Chiefs offense just seems like it has an element of danger that's been missing. From what you saw, did you agree? 100%, yeah. I mean, we we kind of teased a, a number of these things also yesterday, but I thought Rasheed Rice played about as well as I could have imagined. I, I could sense when I was at training camp a few weeks ago that Rasheed Rice was becoming an integral part of that offense. He just has such good rapport with Patrick Mahomes. We saw that on the first completion of the game. Mahomes absolutely rifled the ball. He didn't even really complete his drop. And uh, Rice plucked the ball despite being contested. I mean, it was just a really clean play against a really good defensive effort. That's what wide receiver ones do, right? Like wide receiver ones create production when it's not like easy. Um, And then what we saw Xavier Worthy do was exploit opportunities, a busted coverage, for I think a 35 yard touchdown. And then we saw that reverse, which was his first touch, a touchdown, uh, which made for quite the night, for the rookie. So, you know, we said, you know, maybe Tyree kill, but not really Tyree kill. That wasn't quite what we said, but uh, it's late. So, um, <laughs> but I, like, basically I think they've got something Legion of zoom might be on the way back, especially when we see Mark Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown uh, step back into this offense Like the Chiefs, it almost feels unfair this year. They are going to be, I think, really, really good. The three-peat is absolutely back in play. Not that it was ever out of play. Let's go, Henry. One game in. Yes, (laughs) let's get those takes out there. But no, I'm I'm with you. I mean, you give Patrick Mahomes this element of speed. This was an up-and-down game by their standards, and they scored 27 points and beat what we think is a contender, a very big start to the season. I'm, I'm so excited to see where both of these teams go from here. Like I, I said at the top, I think there's going to be a lot of takes about Lamar and about how this game played out. I think both teams have plenty of reason for optimism. Henry, thanks for staying up late with us, man. I know it's, I know you got a lot to do after the game, but we'll talk to you soon. Anytime. Glad to be here. Good to see you. All right, that does it for this show. That does not do it for week one at all. We've got Packers-Eagles on Friday night, and then the full slate of week one really gets going on Sunday afternoon. We're just getting rolling. And if this Ravens-Chiefs game was a sign of things to come, holy cow, I'm somehow even more excited for the season than I already was. We will talk to you all on Monday after the Sunday games are over. If you haven't, Please go subscribe, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. We're on the socials at NFL on Fox Pod, and we will be back in your feed on Monday. Let's watch some more football. How am I supposed to go to sleep after that? We'll talk to you all soon.